Here it is. Not too busy, this one. Um, I, I actually opened it earlier and just had a little check that everything was working. And I put in these this structure up here. But um, yeah, this is probably the oldest song I've shown you so far. Um, so there's a slightly different way of doing stuff here and there. Uh, why two DAWs? Well, for those who don't know, on Logic, you can uh, have Ableton running at the same time and the audio from Ableton can come into Logic um, through a process called rewire. I've explained this in detail a few times, so you have to look back over the other streams. But this track here, although it looks like there's nothing on it, uh, this in Ableton is going into Logic through here. So that's the sample. And the reason I do that is because I, I just really, really like how it's gone. He's had enough. Got too nerdy for him, guys. Um, the reason I do that is I just really like the algorithms in Ableton. So for this one, you know, I've got it on the pro setting. Um, and you can see here I've done a bit of tempo adjustment. And I just really like the way that it it warps the audio. I think it does a really good job. Um, yeah, the original is 84 BPM, apparently. 90, 84. And we've taken it all the way up to 108. So needed some good algorithms um, to make sure it was all... Hide the chair. I can't be bothered. It's too small in here. Yeah, I needed some good algorithms to make sure we were going to get a smooth mix. Um, what's the difference between those settings in Ableton? Do you mean the algorithms? Yeah, I just... They're, they're both all right. It's just Logic has a type of sound. Ableton has a type of sound. I personally think on vocals or a whole tune, when you're warping it, that the uh, it just does a cleaner job. I can hear Logic like doing stuff when it does its thing, so... I go for Ableton. Um, let me make these bigger. Quick blast of the tune um, so you guys know what we're talking about. There you go. So that's the uh, tune in question. And uh, we'll take it apart. Uh, would have preferred the Fool's Rush in part to be a lot slower. I don't know how... What, half time? <laughs> yeah, like that. I don't know what you mean. That would have been impossible without changing the BPM. Oh my god, the channel strip on the sample. I know, it's absolutely hideous. <laughs> I've it's never seen that. Probably heinous. So many pro key too. I know, like what in the hell is going on? I can't wait to show you guys why it's like that. I would also put it down to youthful ignorance too. This is like three years old now, this song. Uh, it's right. It was oh, right. I think it's right. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's I, don't, I don't know how you could have achieved insane. the same thing. The amount of delay I've had to put into the side chain to make it pump at the right time. Oh yeah, because of like the CPU weird thing. Astronomically yeah, bad. Yeah. Like, I think I've got two separate ones. Oh, it's actually not as crazy as I thought. Yeah, it's it's a whole like sixteenth and a half off. Wow, that's less than I was expecting actually. Um. All right. Anyway, so from the top, I guess we should probably take it from the sample first. Um. Here it is with no plugins. Whoa. That feels weird to mute. Let's take all the ones off the outboard as well. Good loud. Sorry, that's the kick drum as well. So I come to you, my love, my heart above my head. So, I mean, we're already in a great place. You know, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and all I wanted to do was make it sound a little bigger, um, a little more impactful. And, you know, I guess the objective was to make a tune that you could play in a club or at least like, I don't know, a vibey beach party or an after party of some kind that would stand up to like modern day production but have the four freshmen in it. Because as soon as you play a four freshmen tune or a Beatles tune, you know, half the mix falls away and they're amazing songs. But I think it was more of an experiment on my part to just see like if we could get a song from the 40s or 50s up to scratch and sounding banging with our production um so you guys can be the judge of that 
Tell so, him about the whisper tracks. Oh yeah, Everyone's we'll get we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Well, hey, I mean, they're there for clarity. So yeah, we we do this on a lot of songs. It's not just when we sample. Um, we just whisper over whatever yeah. the singer is doing. This or is all me and Howard saying the lyrics along with the freshman, mm-hmm. um, just to add extra clarity. I'll play you at the end. So first up, going into some saturation, just the soft tube one, just a tiny bit. Um, on the keep high setting, so adding a bit of sparkle. Uh, then we're probably, yeah, we're DSing, fab filter. To be honest, that was probably unnecessary because there's hardly any top end going on anyway. Um, <laughs> all these EQs, right, I'm going to get to in a second, right, we'll, we'll bypass those for now because um, they're doing a hilarious <laughs> thing. There might be one, like, actual master EQ that's doing stuff. No, no, they're all just doing something cool. All right, then we're going into the gem. This has given us a lot of top end. Um, here it is without. Here it is with. So, you know, it is boosting the highs, but you're also getting all the hiss and all the crackle. But I'm into that, you know, that's the vibe, uh, especially with a song like this. Then we're going to, uh, sorry, then we're doing some compression. That is actually a lot of compression. If I was to do that again today, I would probably back this down. That's... Yeah, that's a lot of compression. Although I have got it on the old setting and the normal destructor thrust vibe. So that is, it's not doing as much, but. I think I just wanted to make all the gaps in between the vocals, the music, I wanted it to be the same level as the vocal. You know, I never wanted it to be like chilled song, chilled song, vocal, vocal, chilled song. You know, I wanted to reduce the dynamic range. So. That's a lot of compression, even for me. I wouldn't usually rock it that hard nowadays, but this is a few years old. Then some inflator. Is without. With. So for me, everything in the stereo, like out the sides, is being boosted there. I can really get a much bigger picture with what what's happening by using that uh oh here's the normal eq so yeah here's some here's some eq So that's doing some filtering and yeah, generally boosting the high mids, taking out a few resonances and taking out a bit of low mids. Um, then we're going into Soothe, which is doing a lot. That's just uh, taking out all the harshness. Uh, chat says tequila shot for Howard. I see you napping. Yeah, no, I just I want to address these. Everyone's saying don't fall asleep, Howard. I was I was <laughs> closing my eyes so that I could hear guys A and B of that plugin, and it turns out that even when I close my eyes, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> it's happening. It, there is a difference. Okay. Um, then there's some tremolo. I think that's probably automated. Yeah, there's some automation. So with the logic tremolo, if you have the setting here, phase, 180 degrees, it acts more like the sound toys, Pan Man. Um, if you have that on not degrees then it just acts like a volume tremolo but if you have it on 180 it pans from speaker to speaker so with this you can yeah you can see that we're doing like a lot of panning so yeah it sounds crazy on its own but when you do it 
going through a bit of H delay and a bit of plate. It sounds kind of cool. Yeah, just building up the tension. Um, and then we're side chaining with the kick or with my little side chain thingy, but it's doing the job. <laughs> Didn't want to pump it too hard because obviously they're like the main feature. The sample's the main feature of the tune. So Pretty hard. Well, that was me oh, I see. making right, right, it right. crazy. Yeah, that, this is how it actually is. <laughs> It's actually almost nothing. It's only mm -hmm. on a four ratio. And yeah. Uh, and then that's being sent to a little bit of logic chorus, same as I always do. And then on the bus, you've got a bit of multi band compression. So we're taking out a lot of lows here. And so, I come to you, my love. so now I would usually, for this, use uh, the FabFilter Pro Q3 with dynamic EQ, but it didn't exist when I made this tune. So. Um, yeah, we went with the multiband. It does a good job at, you know, controlling the music down here and then controlling their voices up here independently. So that's why I chose that. Uh, and then, yeah, a bit of Ozone dynamic EQ as well. See, Ozone had a dynamic EQ out at this point, but FabFilter didn't. So I used to use this. doing absolutely nothing um i must have just auditioned it and forgot about it and then a little bit more dsing but nothing crazy the craziness <laughs> is these eqs so what i'm gonna do <laughs> is i'm gonna solo all of them uh yeah this shit's crazy i can't remember this. so the, re the reason we did this yeah and it's as simple as this soothe the plugin soothe didn't exist right mm -hmm. if, if soothe had existed we wouldn't have needed to do this. Yeah, right. But at the time, there wasn't, like, there was no way around it. Um, oh, I want to make sure I've got them in the right order. Damn it. Hang on. You need them in the right order. Also, they shouldn't be five. <laughs> they should be three. Four. All right, one. Let's put it in small. One. Two. <laughs> so stupid. Three. <laughs> <laughs> all the comments oh. are what i'm thinking what, what the I'm, fuck is this what, what are we looking at right looking? now <laughs> yeah, yeah. all right so these are four, four eqs yeah bear with me guys i need to find the part where this happens um i think it's in the pre-chorus so the reason i've done this right you see all these eqs they're all in the left speaker only see this setting here that's the middle that's the left so what's happening in the music is there's a big string part, but panned left. And I wanted to take out all those resonances um, so that the vocals could keep up front. Howard is waiting to go home. <laughs> Howard is wanting to go home. Howard is wanting to go home. <laughs> stay, there, stay right there. Um, and so the only way to do that, because there's four chords that happen in this section, was to have four EQs with each one taking out the resonances of each chord. So I'll press play oh, and you'll see what's going on. Oh! Yeah, it's impressive stuff. Though. Come on, man. I'm, I'm doing round two. Jesus it's, Okay, yeah, so it's, it's, it's really technically complicated, but really we just should have got Soothe, right? It didn't like exist, or oh, I didn't know about it or something, yeah. or this was 2017. Was this Soothe was, out in 2017? I don't know. Yeah, you're right. This is why Pro-Q3 was a revolution, because <laughs> this was what I was doing with my life. <laughs> um, but yeah. You, you I, guys think I look tired now. You should have seen me when he was doing that. I was probably fast asleep. 100%. Yeah. 
but anyway, I would actually just like to say that that thing that just happened just then is almost the reason I joined Twitch. It was <laughs> to, to show, show that you off, that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, the, tw the Twitch crowd will get this, man. They'll totally understand where I'm <laughs> yeah, coming from yeah, with yeah, these yeah, yeah. four EQs doing different automation. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, Sooth is here now. I, I put that on today. <laughs> I did a, like, a sort of fresh mix. Um, I think this might be the nerdiest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, or maybe it was a thing and I still needed to do that because it wasn't doing a good enough job or something. I don't know. I need, I need to know when Sooth came out, guys. I, I think I had it from like almost the day it, it was like being talked about. So maybe I did have both. I put a Sooth on the master out today, though, because there wasn't one there, um, this one. But yeah. Um, that's the sample. <laughs> doing some crazy crazy stuff mad automation mm -hmm. um and then yeah you've got the whispers underneath and like howard said this is just for clarity should we just solo them <laughs> sounds super sure. creepy yeah we do this on most songs i'd say i think it's you it sounds like me yeah <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like screamo it's yeah. like one degree away from screamo so we're taking out all the lows obviously because we're only looking for the air Are you mad? Um, and yeah lots of gem dopamine to bring out those highs um on the bus is yeah same same kind of thing and then that's all going to the four freshman bus too and going through all this stuff so when you hear it together i'll do it i'll i'll, I'll toggle it in and out so you guys can hear You can see it's just adding in all of that upper, upper stuff that is missing because it's such an old crackly mm -hmm, recording mm -hmm. and just it. giving it air. Um, the amount of times we've gotten like big like singers and pop stars to do a whisper track and it always makes me laugh. Like yeah, well, you... it's, like if they're R and B, they normally are used to it because yeah, it's yeah. like a thing people do. But yeah, when it's like, but it's funny to listen to. Yeah, because you know, like if you're Gregory in the control Potter room, or something. yeah, Gregory, or like Mary J. Blige, <laughs> yeah. you can be like, all right, Mary, please, we need a whisper track, and then you just mute everything except her, and she's just in there going, "Fools, Roger. <laughs> it's like, are we really making her do this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes me laugh because it's always sounds weird in the moment. It sounds weird as hell soloed, but when you add it into the mix, it all makes sense. Oh, shit. So yeah, there's quite there's a few of those on the new album. There I is, yeah. I can't remember which songs. <clears throat> okay, cool. That's the whispers done. Um, drums, drums time. Voldemort singing, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty Voldemort much that. <laughs> Oh, hang on. There we go. So a really cool swing to this one. Um, here it is without any bus plugins. Yeah, much vibier with the plugins. Um, I think we'll just leave those on. So starting off, we've got battery doing uh, probably the like most of the work, um, except for that ride symbol. Yeah, so I built most of the groove in battery. Um, I started out with the jack kit because it's just my go-to default loading set. And then you can see I've, I've dragged in a ton of samples here. Uh, some glass and different claps. Yeah, even some trappy stuff. Um, 
yeah, I needed quite a lot of different sounds to to get this one right. But my favorite my favorite stuff is definitely these these glass noises. Um, they don't happen much, but they're in there. So there we go. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for gifting. Thanks everyone. Oh, it's Will. Yes, Will. How we doing? Thank you for getting me and Howard to this stage. Will's my friend from LA who helped me understand what the hell Twitch is. And he's gifting subs around. He's gifting subs. Good man. Like there's no tomorrow. Yes, Will. We love you, man. He needs more glass sounds. There you go. Um, what we got here? A little hi hat thingy. So that's a simple kabasa, and then behind it is this weird, like, thing. Let me try and find that. Oh, it's that. That, yeah, sorry, that yeah. One. Yeah, I don't know what that what that is. I just like how it rises again. Underneath everything, it sounds cool. Some extra claps at the end. And those are being controlled by uh, velocity, I would have thought, because they're all sounding very... very different each time they hit. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I've got, you can see here, that one's doing that. So it's just very slightly, by, by using the velocity to control the pitch of the sample instead of um the volume that's quite a quick like easy way to make it sound like real hand claps like it's not going to sound totally real but it's better than just the same sample hitting every single time you know it's like it's a bit different anyway and you can see they're also just all off the grid like all slightly different like that one's not the same as that one that one's ahead of that one you know i've gone through it all quite meticulously and made it Sound kind of real. Um, probably could have just recorded hand claps, to be honest. But they sound good. They sound up front. Oh, here you go. We have got some real hand claps as well. So <clears throat> this is probably me and you, Hawado. Mhm. Mm yeah, those are Lawrence hands. Those are Lawrence doubt. hands. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, they're just going through some overdrive, bit of logic EQ, and then, you know, the good old trusty transient master to take out all the in-betweens. Uh, we could probably, probably hear some spill, actually, if we boost those up. Yeah, hear some breathing. I think we probably did this at Sleeper. Yeah. Sleeper sounds, yeah. We should tell that story about Niall's hand claps. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we did we did a few sessions with Niall Rogers uh, years ago. And Sheik and Sister Sledge have the dopest hand claps of any disco tunes. They're unreal. And we were like, how did you get that sound, man? Like, what did you do? Like, what reverb? What was it? How did you get it? And he just leant back in his chair and just went, big hands. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah something we aspire to have but Big. you know we're working on it we're working on it <laughs> absolutely dope cool so that's uh all the battery covered all the claps um there's a little tambourine hit that happens every now and again and then there's a more rhythmic tambourine that comes in halfway through Yeah, I'm, I'm flexing that with speed, so it's probably sounded more like this originally. But I've got it slowed down. <laughs> Big hands, man. Big hands. Big man. hands. <laughs> Alright, here's the, here's the ride. Uh, I can't remember where this sample's from, to be honest. So 
there's a lot of slow down, speed up stuff going on here. So yeah, I've done like a bunch of reversing and a bunch of like one hit chops, you know, just chop the sample in an interesting way to make it different. And then over that, some kind of hip hop loop, I don't know. Are you mad? I really like hiding like really normal sounding drums underneath a sick beat. To see so, if something's knows. going on. Bauer's raided us, I think. Yo. Shouts to Bauer. Shouts to Bauer. How you doing, man? been absolutely ages hope you're doing well hello all followers from bauer we're taking apart our song uh where angels fear to tread don't know if you guys are even disclosure fans um but just going through the drums right now That about covers that. A um, couple of noise, white noise buildups. Yeah, my favorite. Wicked. That is the percussive side of stuff. Um, and then we've also got um, a few little, oh, a few little beeps going on here. Some like mel melodic toms. <laughs> oh. Those have changed. They used yeah. to have more... Uh, the logic update must have screwed those up. You meant to be like, boo! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> Weird. Uh, yeah, logic usually does a pretty good job at... Uh... All right, well, we give up. You know how they sound in the tune. Boo, 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 boo. That's how they usually go. And then we got some monotribe, little <laughs> weird noises. Where's the dope? Yeah, I like that. It's just, yeah, me jamming on my Korg monotribe build up here. Yeah, good vibes. Um, cool, moving down to the bass. We're actually using... Uh, the logic retro synth for this bass. No way, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, I think we've got, if you if you unhide, we did try Monarch, um, but I think I decided that I liked the retro bass better for this tune. Here's the MIDI if you want it. Quite a lot of automation on this, um, just for cut off. Oh, not that much actually. Yeah, just doing little expressive bits. Yeah, just good old Logic retro bass um, with a few plugins. Here it is without. And with. How do you approach putting chorus on bass? We get asked this a lot. We've yeah, gone through it like every that. stream. Yeah. So look, here's here's the chorus. It's on bus three. I'm sending to it a bit, and I've taken all the bass out of that bus of the bus yeah. because if you chorus, if you send sub like out to the sides, mm -hmm. it, it's not a good idea. Just don't do that. Um, it's bad for when you're cutting vinyl. Mm -hmm. The needle will skip out of the groove if you've got stereo sub going on, um, and it's just. There's not really any point. Like bass is, it, it should be mono. Like below a hundred, maybe two hundred hertz. You want to mono that shit. Um, yeah, we're going through some saturation with that. Bit of EQ. I'm rolling off everything underneath like twenty-five hertz, which is you know almost inaudible. Um, going through this lovely DBX compressor. Yeah, and then just a bit of overdrive and uh, 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually side-chaining this twice. I'm side-chaining the sub with this multi-band. So with this fab filter multi-band, you, uh, you can, again, up here in Logic, you've got the option of choosing uh, a different audio source to pump the side-chain. And I'm... I actually need to solo it or it won't happen. All the bass is gone. <laughs> There it is. Yeah, so I would usually do that if I wanted to maintain the top end of the bass in the mix. Because that way, you know, if you've got a kick drum and a sub going on at the same time, that's what's clashing. The top end of a kick drum and the top end of a bass, uh, they, they're pretty good friends. Like, they, they like live together quite nicely in the mix. It's just the subs clashing is what you want to avoid. So... I've got both going on here, so to be honest, if I was to do this again, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't use that. Like, there's not much point. Um, but you know, if I was to take off the compressor and just use this, this is what you can achieve. You know, you can keep the down, 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 down without the sub clashing. So you notice how all of the harmonics of the note are getting through, but the sub is, is down. So that, that can be, you know, mm -hmm. one way of doing it. And I, I like that way, especially with a busy bass line like this. But in the end, I whacked a side chain on it as well. I think it was just so much going on. And I just wanted their voices to be up front so much that there didn't seem much point in having that bass mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. um, where are we now? That's chords, the bass. Is it? There's no chords. There's just the really? solo at the end. No, there's no chords. We didn't put a pad in that doubled the chords. We did, but we didn't. It didn't make the cut. Oh. I looked at it earlier. That <laughs> you no worked way. them out. Yeah, yeah. But it's we not in there. <laughs> no. Um, here it is. Outtakes. Dope last chord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that is yeah. Guess we just thought it didn't need it. Yeah, yeah. But don't remember. I don't remember either. So yeah, we, we had the bass and we got rid of that and we had that. Is there any other hidden stuff? There's a lot of hidden stuff at the end, which we'll get to now, actually. Yeah, this stuff here. Ruben. Um, Ruben stuff, yeah. So Ruben James, keyboard player for Sam Smith and his own artist now. We were talking about him earlier, playing his tunes, if you just tuned in. Yeah, um, this is the solo that we got him to do at the end of the tune. So we kind of felt like the tune was coming to an end and I think we debated like a fade out or something um but in the end we got ruben in the studio yeah, and he ruben's bit is without a doubt my favorite part oh of the yeah song. me it's too so sick. it's e like it's everyone's yeah probably. it's so but sick. i like how it's at the end because it's like once you got to arrive there to really appreciate yeah, it. yeah, yeah if yeah. it came in straight away i don't feel like it wouldn't it have would... the same impact no yeah. exactly because it's a beautiful little surprise for everyone who made it you know three minutes 30 into the tune yeah so yeah here it is <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Take me to the market. Flog me off. <laughs> Flog me off. Uh, oh. and this is real whirly as well guys this is you know it's all audio so that's why it's a mono signal as well uh, the whirly we were using yeah it was all mono oh god he's so sick man you wait till we get to the outtakes there's some shit I can't believe we didn't put in Oh, 
Oh. Yeah, Come on now. Absolutely dope. So uh, let me see how much of this is different. Wow. Okay. So this is a few different takes he did spliced together. So I think what we did was we got into just play like for ages. If I unhide some tracks here. Um, yeah, here he is. We got into just play Ugh. and play and play. Um, it was such a great day. It man. was so fun to watch. Yeah. yeah, he absolutely nailed it. Um, let's move these up here. So I don't know the best way to explain this, really, because like, if I if I unroll this first bit, I mean, it's just already. It's a totally different, different thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wait, oh, what's right. going I'd on? Have to, oh, that's I'd, the comp. I'd have to um, put it on this mode. Hang on. No overlap. Oh, Jesus. I mean, it all works. Look, listen to that with the tune. It's still fire. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> You know, it's just like a variation. Shit. <laughs> You're having a great time. Yeah. Aren't you? Should we just keep listening? No, to we this? shouldn't. We shouldn't. It's it's mean to Ruben because he was still working it out the earlier you go. So okay, it's, but yeah. I, we need to show them this part. Yeah, yeah, sure, this sure. Is insane. Oh yeah, when he went in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> happening <laughs> yeah and look i even got him to do some arp stuff like he was he was absolutely killing it on the whirly we got a few rounds of that and then i i guess i just pulled him up on this and he started <laughs> crazy mm. so we tried a few things yeah, that one didn't work, but it's worth a go. Uh, I guess that's him as well on the Poly 6. But yeah, man, he did rounds of these, not loads. I think we got him on like three different tunes that day, right? We yeah. Were a few, yeah, a few variations. We just basically played him everything we had and just got him to play a well. It's yeah, over the like top, we tried yeah. Moonlight, a couple other stuff that we were working on for the album, just see what he could add. And oh, We should get him in again soon, man. We should get him in again soon, yeah. Um, People keep asking who? Reuben James. Reuben James. Keep Check him out. Go Sam on his SoundCloud. Smith. Yeah. Also, go on. Uh, go, go on, on his Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. Ugh. So dope. Woo. Oh. So yeah, all I've done here really is just just slightly tidy it up. You know, I, I think we took the best of. Our favourite parts. This was my favourite part. Oh my god! And I, I just bust a load of chorus on that yeah, one yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's how yeah. I know it's my favourite. So I was like, yo, that bit needs to absolutely sing. Uh, we got Pan Man on there as well, Jeez. like doing some extra tremolo chorus as well. Oh, and then just a little delay flourish at the end. Take me to the market. Everything's and half price. Everything's in stock. <laughs> Just take me there. Uh, yeah, that's that's about all for the for the end. Yeah, like you said, it's probably mean to Ruben if we just go through all of his takes, but well, I would like to. But yeah, yeah, he nailed it. Someone's saying, how long does it usually take to make these tracks? I mean, yeah, like every track's different. This one um what like i mean to, to actually like compose it and organize it into the structure it was probably like a day or two but then in, in yeah. terms of like producing it up 
like, what do you reckon guy in terms of actual work um like, the mixing took me a long time because i've yeah. never tackled a sample like that yeah. and i was lacking a lot of knowledge and i was lacking <laughs> eq knowledge as you can see <laughs> so that i think i did a few mixes of it which i wouldn't usually do now or even back then you know i'm kind of a one one mix kind of kind of guy so yeah i remember doing i've got a lot of mp3s of this that are like version one version two version three I want to say maybe four or five versions. Nothing mm -hmm. insane. But. Mm -hmm. And they weren't versions. They were just like getting better each time. I just needed breaks between it. I needed to like rest my ears because I was getting so like lost in that sample yeah. after a while. There's not was... really much you can like reference to get the mix yeah, of a tune yeah. like this. No, there's literally not. That's one yeah. thing I'd say about it is it's like our take on it w without sounding too arrogant is, is like really original. Like, I've never heard. There was, like you said, there's nothing I could listen to in my car to compare to, to this. To get the mix the same. Not yeah. really. Yeah, not really. I was listening to like, there's plenty of hip hop that sampled stuff like this, but you know, a hip hop mix is pretty different because I wanted the sample up front as the main mm, part mm. rather than hidden behind the rap. So yeah, it took me a while to understand like where I wanted it. But yeah, this is a pretty unusual tune. So Super normally, unusual, normally yeah. it's much quicker than that. I'd say. I was so proud when we put this one out because I was just like, people are going to, People are going to think about Disclosure. Well, they're not going to know what to think about Disclosure. Be like, <laughs> what the hell do you guys actually make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You seem to make everything. You make Garage and now you're making 40s acapella music. Like, what's happening? And I like yeah. that. Um, cool. A few plugins on the master out, guys. I'll just uh, show you those. The most interesting one that I don't usually use on my master out is this, uh, the Sound Toys bundle. Um, I think that's just doing some build-up stuff in the breakdown. <laughs> Oh yeah, we didn't go over the breakdown. The breakdown, it's only compressing the, the mono sound, the mid, and then the sides are left to sort of be there. But I've literally got it on like 10%. It's not doing a lot. Um, but yeah, it's just to bring the sides out a bit. You could also do that with um, EQ. You could put like a boost um, in here, um, like that, and then have it on um, side. And that will now only boost the sounds that you've panned left and right. It's not going to boost um, anything mono down the middle. That's a good tip for if you want to widen a mix without using, a, um, you know, like a stereo imaging plugin. You can do it within some EQs that have mid side separation. See, I've got it on here, channel mode. You can either have it on left and right or mid side. So if you have it on left and right, these become left and right toggles. So now I'm boosting in the left speaker. Now I'm boosting in the right speaker. Uh, can you see it? Left, right, left, right. But here, mid side, it switches from mono, stereo, mono, sorry, mono, side, mono, side. So yeah, you could do the same sort of thing with a boost just in the sides. Um, but in this case, I'm using compression. Then soothe, which I think I just put this on today because it was sounding painful. <laughs> Uh, then I auditioned the SSL, but again, like I said, I didn't know what I was doing, so I think I left it bypassed. Tiny bit of EQ on the master. Um, I would have bypassed this before bouncing it and sending it to master, because I would have just told my mastering guy, look, I've got a little boost around 5k and I've got a cut around 20. Will you just do that with your stuff? And he would go, yes. So that's just a guide for him. Uh, and then limiter, which you guys don't need to hear because it's not on the final track. That is it. Questions. Do you keep the master chain when you send a song for mastering? Yeah, I, out of this, I would keep everything that you see now on is what would have got sent to master. I would bypass the limiter. Everything else on there is on because that's how I like it. Do you oversample on Soothe? No, but... I get why people do. Sounds different. Not better or worse, but yeah. <laughs> you want to hear the Al Green stuff, mate. We're, it's getting a bit late, I'm afraid. But next time, maybe. Maybe we'll listen through some Al Green stems, which we're lucky enough to own. Uh, what else are you guys saying? You are, do you want to answer a few questions? Oh, I've got to go to the toilet. I'm yeah, yeah. Um... Oh, sorry. Uh, Howard, how do you make the most of the old Junos? Um, I don't know. What do you mean? You mean in terms of like sound design or like playing them in the right places? I, I guess like 
the thing is with the old Junos is like there's the differences between them like one of them has the arpeggiator one of them has like midi input so you can trigger it using you know you can draw notes in stuff that you're not good enough to play and make it play that um yeah they've all got like pros and cons uh they're all dope um i've bought so many junos in my time and they just break it's really annoying um they have this problem where like three notes play and n nothing else will play um and I, I, to fix it is really long and it's cheaper to just buy a new one which is like yeah it's a nightmare but guy's got this one working at the moment which is yeah it's a 106 here we've been using that for a couple of years now and it's it's really good um we use it quite a lot steal the chair yeah i should it's too late and we're going home soon you know Ugh. I'll, I'll let him have the chair this time because he's bought me a new chair um how do you make stuff sound so fat without it becoming distorted um well everything guy just explained the whole last hour of talk that um howard how did you improve your piano skills um i mean yeah i still am you know like everyone is um I learned piano, I got like really, really basic lessons when I was like six or seven. I did like grade one and then I stopped getting lessons because I didn't like it because it was so like uh, sight reading based and I just, uh, I never liked sight reading piano. I could do it with bass, okay, but um, yeah, it wasn't for me because I I'd just memorize the song and play it and then not read it and get away with it that way. But um, yeah, so generally the way I've learned piano is by working out people's songs. So I'd listen to songs by like Aqualung or um, Stevie Wonder or Steely Dan or something like that. And I would like listen to it, rewind it, learn that chord, rewind it, learn the next chord and learn the whole song the whole way through. And then from doing that, you end up knowing a bunch of chords and then you can make your own songs out of those. Um, do you play guitar? Yeah, we both play guitar because um, our dad is a really good guitarist. So he taught us that pretty early on um but yeah now my main instrument used to be bass i played bass for years and years and years and but i haven't practiced for like since we you stopped play, doing the you live played show bass for years and years not for the band years and years um oh, i was gonna say how did you fit that in yeah uh no i don't have perfect pitch um but we've both got like pretty relative pretty good relative pitch so like once we're in a key we can probably tell you what notes going on um and the same, I, I'm getting better at like hearing chords. Once I know what key we're in, I can like, I can hear a chord and know how to play it on the piano quite well. Um, and that's just from years of doing what I was saying about like listening to a song and working it out. The more you do that, the better you get at like recognizing how a chord sounds and the shape that you make with your hands. Um, so yeah, like generally speaking, pretty much self-taught on the piano. Um, and I've got a long way to go, you know, like listening to Ruben earlier, like, yeah, he had lessons, I, I know, from various different teachers but again it's practice you know that guy's been playing in ronnie scott's for like years you know i saw him in ronnie scott's like eight years ago and he was as good as he is now so yeah i got a long way to go shouts to the indigo child gifting some subs there and to you van gifting subs thanks to everyone gifting subs and for subscribing all right i think we're gonna call it a day there yeah man it's bedtime bedtime i've got so much to do tomorrow um and so do you probably are you doing interviews and stuff tomorrow yeah 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 stuff. lots of press and whatever yep. um thursday will be about tuesday next week definitely won't be doing a stream what? maybe next thursday we'll be doing a stream but um yeah we will see yo gifting subs left right and center <laughs> big love everyone um yeah sweet we'll leave you with this one 1989 by kamal williams and Miguel Atwood Ferguson. New album out now called Wuhan. It's absolutely dope. I'll, I'm going to start this tune again because it's so sick. The whole Reload. tune slows down. Pull up. Pull up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Night, guys. Peace, guys. See you Thursday. Money.